Hey everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to this video. So in this video, we're going to learn about Godot game development using JDScript and we're going to create a very simple 2D top-down player controller quick and fast. So I hope you're really excited. So let's get started. So here as you can see, I have the Godot engine opened and here and now from here, I'm going to simply click on new project. And as you can see, a new project dashboard has been opened. Now from here, you can select the folder where you actually want to save the project. And for the renderer, you can select any of these renderers. For now, it doesn't matter. Let's keep it to default. And then let's go and browse and select the folder where we actually want to save this. In my case, I save all my projects in this Godot folder. Then click on select current folder. And let's give a name to this folder. Let's say Godot player controller or something like that and then make sure to click on create folder so that it creates another new folder for this project so create folder and then click on create and edit and now you will see it will go ahead and create a new empty project for us so let's wait for it to create the project and then we can start coding all right so as you can see here we have the godot editor opened so as you can see currently we are in the 3d mode you can simply click on this 2d to go to the 2d mode and in this case we are going to work on a 2d game Okay, so this is how things look like. So first of all, as you can see here, we have the scene window. Here we have the import tab. Here we have the inspector, node and history. We don't need to know all these things for now. For now, just know that here we have the file system where we can actually import different assets. So in this case, in the resource folder, we're going to import some of the 2D sprites that you're going to use in this case. So you can right click and create a new folder here and you can name this one, let's say sprites. And inside that we can store our sprites now this is optional you can also directly drag and drop your sprites in the resource folder and then you can use them as well so let's go and use some of these sprites I'm going to use this one and this one in this case so let's go and drag and drop them inside the sprites folder and now as you can see here we have two different sprites okay so first of all as you can see it is saying empty because currently we're in an empty scene so what we can do is let's go and click on this 2d scene and now as you can see a new node 2d has been opened for us so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply go ahead and name this one game all right so this is our game so now while selecting this game node what you can do is you can either right click and click on add child node or you can simply click on this plus button and from here we're going to add something called a texture rect so click that and click on create and now as you can see a new texture rect node has been created as a child of this game node okay so now what you're going to do is as you can see in our sprites folder in our resources we have this land grass texture so what you're going to do is in the texture slot we're going to drag and drop this one right here so now as you can see as soon as i drop it here the texture has been selected that as the texture of this texture rect so let's go and rename this one to ground quickly so ground and now I can simply drag and drop this, not drag and drop this, I can simply drag this and make it longer as much as I want. But currently as you can see it is getting stretched and this is not something that we want. So what we can do is in the texture from the stretch mode as you can see scale is selected. So from here let's go and click on tile and as soon as I do it as you can see now the whole thing has been tiled and it is fitting the whole game screen. Now currently as you can see this is the whole game screen that we have later on we can change it to change it you can go to this project and then you can go to project settings and then you can go to this window and from here as you can see the viewport width and height has been set let's go and add 1280 as the width and 720 as the height and also for the stretch mode let's click on canvas items so now the window will not get bigger and leave white spaces around so with that done let's click on close and now if i go ahead and click on play you will see it is asking me to save the scene and also there is no current scene so now what i'm going to do is press ctrl s to save the scene so here i'm going to go ahead and create a new folder if you want to or you can save it here as well so let's create a new folder and let's name it scenes and now inside the scenes folder we're going to name it as game.tscn which is the godot's default extension for scenes and then click on save so now as you can see in the scenes folder we have a scene now if i click on play you will see it is asking me to select a current scene let's click on select current and now as you can see this is how our game is running so this is how the game looks like for now 
Okay, so let's go ahead and fill the whole screen with the classes. To do that, as you can see, this is the whole screen. I'm going to simply drag and drop it, and as you can see, automatically it will be tiled throughout the whole screen. Okay, so now that we have the background ready, let's go and start creating the player. To do that, we're going to create another new scene for the player. So a scene can be thought of as another entity, or you can think think of it as a prefab which you can reuse on other scenes as well. Okay, so that is why we're going to create a player as a separate scene, and then we can add that player scene on this game scene as well. All right, so let's click on this plus sign here, and then you will be able to create a new scene. Okay, so for now, let's go and create a new 2D scene, and not 2D, and let's go and name it to player. Let's name it player. So here we have our player. So now what I'm going to do is, on the player, I can right click, add child node, and then I'm going to add a sprite 2D. Okay, a sprite 2D. So as you can see here we have a sprite 2D, and in the sprite property, in the texture property of the sprite, I can drag and drop the rabbit that I have got, and now as you can see, here we have the rabbit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So select the sprite 2D. And for the scale, let's set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, something like this, or even smaller, let's say 0 0.3 should be good, I think. All right, so here, as you can see, we have our player. I can also select the move tool and move the rabbit on the center of the screen right here. Okay, so now that we have the rabbit, in this case, we simply want to move the rabbit left and right, up and down, just by pressing the arrow keys on our keyboard. So first of all, let's go and save the scene. As you can see, it is saying unsaved. So click on S, Control S, and as you can see now, you can save it as player.tscn, and inside the scenes folder, I'm gonna save this. So now we have two different scenes. One is for game, another one is player. So in the player scene, we're gonna add a new script to the player, using which we can move the player up and down, left and right. All right, so let's go and select the player. And then from here, as you can see, we can attach a new script. So let's click on this one. As you can see, new script has been created and it is currently creating the script in the scenes folder. Later on, we can move it in the scripts folder. So first of all, uh, let's go and in the files, let's go to up and create a new folder. Let's create a new folder. I'm gonna name this one scripts. Okay, and inside the scripts folder, let's go and save our player script for now. So let's go and create, and as you can see, a new player script has been created. So now as you can see, a new player script has been created. And in this case, we're going to write GDScript here. So this is a new player script created using GDScript. That is why the extension is GD here. All right, so now what we need to do is, first of all, this ready function can be thought of as start function in Unity, and this process function, you can think of it as the update function in Unity. Okay, and this delta is kind of like the time to delta time. All right, so with that done, before we want to, before we can actually move the player, let's go and create a variable speed. For that, we're gonna write var speed, and let's set it to about 300 for now. And this is the speed by which we want to move our player. Also, we want to edit the speed from the editor. So that is why, in the beginning, we're gonna write add rate export. So once we write that, now we can edit this variable from the inspector. You can think of it as a private variable, making public, or the serialized field property in Unity. Okay, so now that we have the speed, now what we need to do is we need to actually make the player move. And we're gonna do that inside the process function. This process function gets called again and again and again every single frame. That is why we're gonna do it inside the process folder. Okay, so inside the process folder, first of all, what you're gonna do is we're gonna get the input that we are getting from the left and right arrow keys and up and down arrow keys. Now there are various different ways by which we can actually take inputs in Godot and we can explore more of these in the future videos but for now I'm going to try to keep it the simplest. So that is why I'm going to show you the simplest way to take input from the up and down and left and right keys. For that you can simply write input dot get vector, get vector exactly as it is and then if you press control and hover over it, you can get more information about this function. So let's press control and hover over it and click on it. And now as you can see, you can see the documentation and it will, it will tell you what this get vector function actually does. 
So as you can see, it automatically takes the negative x-axis, positive x-axis, negative y, and positive y inputs. And according to that inputs, it can actually store them inside another variable. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is for the negative input, negative left input, we're going to write ui underscore left. For the positive right input, we're going to write ui underscore right. Then for the up input, we're going to write ui underscore up. And for the down input, we're going to write ui underscore down. Now, these are some of the default axes created by Godot in their input system. If you want, you can create your own, create and define your own variables in the Godot input system. You can get that from the project, project settings. And if you go to this input map, you will see from here, you can add any other input that you want to. Okay. So from here, you can search, you can add a new input and from there, you can create a new input action. But for now, I'm just using the built-in things. So now that we have got the input, now we need to store it inside something. And in order to store it, what you're going to do is we can store it inside position. And this position is the position to which the script is attached. And currently this script is attached to our player. So this can be thought of as the player's position. And we want to change the player's position. That is why we're going to write plus here, not nine. We can write plus here. So this will automatically add to the current position of the player according to the input that we are getting from the left and right up and down arrow keys. And that is how the player's position will be changed. Now we're going to multiply it with speed and then we're going to multiply it with delta. And just by doing this, exactly like we did in Unity, we can multiply it with input, speed and delta. And this way we can create some cool movement behavior using the left and right up and down arrow keys. So with that done, now you can simply go ahead and click on this run current scene button. And once you do that, you will see here we have our player. And now if you select our arrow keys, you can see you can move the player using up and down left and right arrow keys, and you can move the player anywhere that you want to. Okay. You can also press the up and right and up and left arrow keys at the same time to move the player on diagonal axis. So this way our input is working. So now that our player scene is ready and our game scene, which is our main scene is also ready. Let's go and instantiate our player in our game scene. So let's select this 2D and go back to the 2D view, go to the game scene. And as you can see, player is a different scene. So what we can do is we can instantiate or create an instance of this player scene in the game scene and everything will be same exactly as we have created the player. For that, you can simply click on this, this instantiate child scene button and make sure this game one is selected. And now click on this instantiate child scene. And now here we're going to select this player and then click on open. And now as you can see, the player has been created in our game scene. So now if I go ahead and click on play, now you will see here we have the whole game and the player can be moved left and right, up and down using up and down, left and right arrow keys. And this way we can actually move our player. And we can also move in eight directions using this simple lines of code. So this way we have created a simple 2D top down movement from the player. So currently the player cannot interact with anything because it doesn't have any collider because we don't have any other things in the game as well. But later on, we're going to add more features and we can learn about more things so that we can do more in Godot. So thank you so much for watching. This is Raja from Charger Games. I hope you really enjoyed and learned a lot of new things from this video. So thank you so much. And I'm going to see you in another video very soon.